Okay, two inequalities joined by the words and or or are called compound inequalities. In this video, we'll be focusing on those word, those joined by the word and. Remember from earlier that the solution set of a compound inequality joined by the word and is the overlap or the intersection of each of the individual solution sets. So I wanna make sure we're, some, we're very clear about something. The word and usually makes people think more. Right, I have this and that, so it seems like you have more things. But in, in this context, the word and is really going to be imposing more restrictions on what we're going to accept into the solution set, right? Because we're saying that we're looking for the overlap. Where is something a solution to both components or all components? So let's look at an example, a sort of non-math example. What if we had some diva, let's say, actress who only wanted her dressing room to be filled with things that are green and candy? Right, so this word and is going to impose more restrictions. She's only going to be happy if the things that are in her dressing room are both green and candy. So let's just look at some examples of pictures here. Would she be happy if she saw red M&Ms? Well, she would not because it's not green, right? So even though an M&M is candy, it's not part of the set green. So it's not in the overlap. So that would not be a good thing to put in her dressing room. How about the green M&M? Well, green M&M is certainly green. It's also a candy. So that would be part of the solution set for the intersection, green and candy. The purple lollipop is no good. Even though it's candy, it's not green. So that does not belong. How about the green apple? That's green, right? But unfortunately, it's not a candy. So it does not belong in the intersection. The carrots don't belong in anything, neither set. It's not green. It's not candy. That would not be a good thing to put in her dressing room. Likewise, for the broccoli, we've got it that it's green, but not candy, so it does not belong in her dressing room. Green starburst, finally, we've got something that's green and candy, so we'll allow that into her dressing room. The yellow candy, the yellow M&M is no good because it's not part of the set for the green. Um, and then finally, the green jelly beans, those would be part of the set. So the, the solution to green and candy from this list of objects would just be these three elements. Okay, if you really were looking for a complete list, list of the solution, you'd have to list here everything that was both green and candy. So I don't, I don't know, there's lots of green candies out there, but of this list of objects, these are the only three that satisfy it. So the point of this demonstration, this example here, was really just to demonstrate that this word and does not make the solution set larger, which it might intuitively feel like it does, but it really makes the restrictions more so you, when you restrict more, you accept less things into your set. Okay, so let's look at a more math example here. We have an intersection of two sets. Our two sets are, uh, we have A is the sets, uh, the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, and B is all the values X such that X is an odd number. So this is really just a fancy notation for saying all odd numbers. Okay, so let's look at some examples. We have some numbers listed here. These are, of course, not all the numbers in the whole world, but we've got some numbers just to get a feel for what these sets look like. So let's start with the number one. Where does one belong? Well, one certainly is an element of A, but one is also an odd number. So one not only belongs in the blue section, but it also belongs in the pink section. So in fact, it belongs in the intersection, the overlap. It's a solution to the intersect. It's a element of the solution if, of the intersection. Okay, the number four. Four is an element of A, for sure. It belongs in the blue, but it's not an odd number, so it does not belong in the pink or the purple. So it has to stay over here in the blue section. The number six is also an element of A, but also does not belong in the intersection or, the, or B, so, because it's not odd. So it has to stay over here in just the purely blue part. The number seven is not an element of A, um, but it is an odd number, so it belongs over here in the purely pink part, right? not overlapping here. How about the number two? Two is part of an element of A, but it's not odd, so it's gotta stay over here in the blue section. The number five is an element of A, it's listed right there, and it's also an odd number, so that would belong right in that intersection. How about three? Three is, again, both odd and in the element A, so that belongs in that intersection. And finally, number 25 is odd, of course, so it belongs in B, but not in A, so it belongs right here. So the solution, A intersect B, 
is going to be equal to all of the numbers that are in both A and B. So in this case, the only odd numbers in A are 1, 3, and 5. So the solution for A intersect B is 1, 3, 5. Okay, let's look at another example with inequalities. So here we have two sets. A is the set where uh, of all values x that are greater than 4, strictly greater than 4, and b is the set of all values that are less than or equal to 20. Okay, so I'm not going to do this with a Venn diagram because I'm hoping you're getting the idea here, but if we're looking for the intersection, we want to know what values of x are going to be elements of both of these sets simultaneously, the overlap. Okay, so this and is, is, is really restricting which ones are in the solution. So let's look to see uh, what we have. So what does A look like? So we can't list, like we did in the last examples, what numbers satisfy X. I mean, we could list some values. I'm sorry, what values satisfy A, right? So um, for example, what are some numbers in the set A? Well, certainly the number like 5, 6, 7, 8. But we also have things like 5.1 and 6.7. And we just have an infinite number of these. We can't possibly list them all. So we can't do the Venn diagram tactic. So what we usually do for inequalities is we graph them. So let's visualize what the solution set, that is a crooked line, that's okay. <laughs> let's visualize the solution. So if we're looking for all values of x that are greater than four, if we picture four on our number line right here, we're taking all the values that are not including four, but greater than four, and then going in this direction, right? So all anything that's greater than four is in the set A. How about B? B is the set, let's see if I can do a little better. B is the set of all numbers that are less than or equal to 20. So 20 is maybe down here, and we're, we're gonna take everything including 20, but then everything less than or equal to it. So it's all these values going infinitely in that direction. So what is the solution of A intersect B? Right, what are the values of x that satisfy a and simultaneously also satisfy b? So if we really stack these two inequalities on top of each other visually, these solutions, we can actually just see that the only places that are going to satisfy everything would be not including 4, but from 4 all the way up to 20, including 20. So we'd be just looking at the overlap, the parts that are both solutions to a and b. So the intersection, the overlap, is going to be so the solution set, A intersect B, if we were trying to write it in um, interval notation, we would write this as the values between 4 and 20, including 20.